Hey everybody, it's Thunder the Desert Shaman. I'm making this video uh, because I just read a a comment on the Campfire Council, which is a group I have. And somebody uh, wrote a comment on there that maybe indicated that certain things in life aren't to be included in the realm of uh, spirituality or in the realm of the Campfire Council. Let me let me just. I'm glad that uh, I was in the right mood to make this video. Let me just say right now, there is nothing in life that is not spiritual. <laughs> there is nothing in life that is not spiritual. There is nothing in life that is not sacred. There is nothing in life that should be viewed as uh, maybe being immoral or wrong or. Uh, particularly in the areas of sex and uh, let's say breasts or uh, tits or whatever you want to call them or uh, sensuality, eroticism, that type thing. That's all part of life. Got news for you. Now either you're enjoying that part of, your, uh, part of life or you're denying it. You're either enjoying it or denying it. Romance, eroticism, uh, good food, uh, good good places in the world to go, romantic places, uh, living life in the moment, living life as if it's an erotic love affair. That's how life should be lived. There are, should be no uh, constriction as far as life goes okay life is uh, subjective to each individual of course by the way that they were indoctrinated in their life uh, and there's a key word the key word here being indoctrination the key word here being uh, mass hypnosis indoctrination uh, societal conditioning I could use all kinds of words for why people get in this situation where they have blinders on and they can only see if anything uh, comes in to their view outside of those blinders that either scares them or they don't have the right viewpoint on them. Why? Because they've been only staring in one direction and only thinking one way and only thinking about their own particular likes or dislikes. So the thing is, is on the council, anything goes. Uh, I have been thinking lately about not having any moderators or just one moderator that is on there every day watching everything as closely as I do because inevitably I catch things that maybe shouldn't be on there. Like, okay, so... Uh, somebody recently made a statement about defecation okay in reference to a, a beautiful erotic picture that to me didn't didn't fly okay as soon as i spotted that i went oops no we we don't want to go there now as far as what's posted on the council or even uh, this this is uh, this talk is for not just people on the council but for People on Facebook or anywhere, for that matter, the, the less censorship, the thing I pri that I take pride in on the Campfire Council is let the less censorship, the better. We don't need censorship. Censorship is already upon us in many, many fucking forms with the uh, mainstream media telling us this is what's p politically correct or that's what's p politically correct. Or this, you can't say these words, or you can say the uh, these words. Control of your speech, control of your thoughts. No, on, on the council, we are totally free spirits. And I make sure that it's that way. I monitor it. And uh, I steer it in certain directions purposely. Because I might feel like the group as a whole might need uh, exposure to a certain thing. 
Does, does Thunder post erotic pictures? Hell yes, I do. No apologies. Does somebody else post erotic pictures? Does uh, And I'm not talking about porn. I'm talking about the natural human body. Last time I checked, that was spiritual. So that's how I feel about that. Just right, right from the get-go. Anything that is on Campfire Council is in good taste, okay? It could be erotic. It could be a woman's body. Hell, it could be a, a nice-looking man. Uh, with rippled muscles and biceps or whatever. I don't stop people from putting that up. In fact, I've put pictures up of uh, Indians and Braves and just loincloths and stuff. And yeah, I hope it's erotic for the women. I really do. Because what we're talking about here is the Shakti and Shiva energy of the universe. Funny that should come up today. Kind of an inside joke there. Funny that should come up, but the Shakti Shiva energy of the universe is very erotic. It There's no way that it can't be erotic. And let's take, uh, take a good look at that because uh, Shiva Shakti, the, the, in, in Hindu, the Shakti energy is the divine feminine. It's actually the, the spark, okay, that keeps humanity going, keeps the world going, keeps the uh, energy in flux, okay? And Shiva, the, the male component, is, uh, so there's Shakti the female and Shiva the male. Uh, constantly there's an interplay going on there in the world. And this interplay is divine. It's a divine play. It's Leela. And Shakti is always trying to seduce Shiva, and Shiva is uh, constantly creating, creating off this, this, uh, this Shakti, this divine energy, this feminine energy force that is in all of us. Matter of fact, if the truth be known, divine feminine energy probably created the cosmos and the world and the whole uh, ball of wax as we know it. Now, what do tribal people think about this? Are tribal people uh, <laughs> anal? Are they? Uh, do they only look at certain things, and are or are they open to uh, all kind kinds of ritual, all kinds of uh, experiences? Uh, the feminine energy held. Yes, they're into the feminine energy. That's why there was a matriarchal society in most uh, tribal nations. Are they into uh, kundalini? Are they into uh, esoteric practices like tantra yoga and tantrika? Well, hell yes, in their own ways. The Hopi even have their own secret societies on this stuff. So, did tribal people have fun? Did tribal people kid around? Did tribal people, uh, were they passionate? Were they erotic? Well, what do you think? <laughs> What do you think? Hell of a lot more than uh, what we got in society society today with all its uh, principles of morality and uh, things that are supposed to be politically correct. What could be more correct than nature? What could be more correct than nature and following your basic human nature and instincts and energy? See, I've said before, it's all about energy. The universe is in constant flux, and it's all about energy. And you can make anything out of that energy that you want. If you're a shaman, or if you're an enlightened being, or if your uh, consciousness is on a higher frequency, you can do anything you want with that energy. You can manipulate it. You can play with it. You can have fun with it. Okay? You can... You're a creator. Now, how you view what you create is up to you. The whole world is. Uh, I'll go out on a. I'll go out on a limb here. I'll, uh, uh, the whole world is like fucking continually, and that's exactly what's happening. It's the yin and yang energies of the universe, the male female energies of the universe, 
combining into this swirling mass that we see as the yin-yang sign in the martial arts and in other in Taoist philosophy and in Chinese philosophy. You see the yin-yang sign and you see the, the, the fish eating its tail in continuous chaotic motion. Okay. And it's utter chaos and it's just like it's orgasmic. It what it's what makes the universe explode. It, it's what makes the universe go around and around and around. It's what pervades all of nature. It's the spirit that moves in all things. Is that erotic? Well, it's as erotic as you can get. What does erotic mean? Well, it makes you feel good. Now, as far as the council goes, if somebody sees uh, romantic stuff or somebody might see some interplay between two in individuals that uh, sometimes is erotic or romantic or uh, what the hell's wrong with that? That's natural. That's a, that's a, that should be permeating everybody in the council. Everybody in the council is a male or female. And everybody in the council should be having some kind of erotic, pleasurable enjoyment in their life. And if they're not... <laughs> <laughs> if they're not, well, then uh, whose fault is that? And uh, do you get jealous because other people are? Or do you envy the fact that other people are? Um, maybe you should try it. You'll like it type thing. Or at least not judge it. So, yeah, the Campfire Council is... Uh, fine with me every, what's going on now yeah there's some sometimes things get a little weird in there but doesn't life get weird what is weird doesn't life uh, go to extremes and uh, bounce back and forth and one minute it's yin and the next minute it's yang and one minute it doesn't feel as good as it did before but yet yeah man that sure felt good before I want to get back there so life is constant change. If there's anything that you can be sure of in life is that change is coming your way, baby, in one way or another. Because it's uh, one minute is not going to be like the next and the next and the next. So if you really want to flow through life, okay, You'll make everything erotic, whether it's yin or yang, whether it's swinging this way or that way. You'll try to see somewhere in there the erotic, the pleasurable, could be another word, uh, the sensual uh, feeling that you should be getting from life as a whole in general. How do you feel when you stand on the beach and uh, the sun's going down and you can feel the essence of the ocean and they, there may be clouds in the sky? Does that not feel sensual? Does that not feel erotic? Well, hell yes, it does. How does it feel just to breathe? How does it feel to wake up in the morning and take a deep breath? How does it feel to eat certain foods where uh, the taste in your mouth is just so tantalizing and so luscious and so mouth-watering that it feels like you're having sex? Unless you're living life this way, you are missing a lot. <laughs> okay? I pity you. I pity you if you're not delving into the passion of life, the sensuality of life, the eroticism of life, which goes way beyond a, a nice tit or a, a shapely ass. But hey, if you see that, uh, what does it do to you? Well, uh, it should trigger that feeling of passion, that feeling of eroticism, that feeling of... Uh, enjoying life fully in the moment and uh, not having fear, not having guilt about anything, not having a quote unquote false sense of morality. Organized religion tends to get into a false sense of morality. We don't need it. We don't need it in the council. 
I don't need it. I don't need a, a false sense of morality of like one thing is uh, not good or ooh, that's naughty or that's bad. Actually, I kind of like naughty. You can you can be naughty because naughty's fun. It it uh, brings up certain uh, issues about taboos in life. Okay, and then what happens is is when you break that taboo in your life when you're naughty. When you break a taboo, God, somehow it just kind of feels fucking good, doesn't it? It just, on some level, when you break a taboo, like, oh, naughty, naughty, you're not supposed to think in terms of uh, naked women or uh, hot men or whatever, the human body. Well, geez, when you break that taboo, well, then I guess, uh, geez, that's a big one, isn't it? You think? And then there's the issue of other taboos uh, that are probably all in some way related to you not letting go and enjoying life, okay? Or you feeling like uh, you have to adhere to what other people might be thinking about you or uh, adhere to a uh, some type of role where... Uh, you feel that you have to be more holy or you have to be, uh, that all comes from within. That all comes from within you. You're either holy or you're not holy. You're either holy, holy, high, on a high level frequency where you see everything. You see the big picture. You see everything for what it is. Politics, uh, mind games, uh, the media, uh, all kinds of images uh, being flashed on us all day long. Um, you see everything for what it is, which is just a big swirling mass of energy created by this yin-yang aspect of the two energies fucking, okay, in the universe and exploding into orgasmic uh, energy, vibrations, light, uh, Everything that cannot be named, as the Taoists say, the, uh, the great mystery cannot be named. It cannot be named. You can't get a grasp on it. You can't hold on to it because the minute you try to hold on to the great mystery is the minute you lose it. So you just have to let it flow through you and you have to let truth flow through you and you have to let uh, enlightenment flow through you. And it has nothing to do with, oh, this per person's posting this or uh, I don't know if we're spiritual enough or I don't know if we're tribal enough or I don't know if this or I don't know if that. Because then you're starting to differentiate. Then you're starting to put things in a cube. Then you're starting to be like organized fucking religion. That's not what the Campfire Council is. Campfire Council is free spirit status, baby. So anybody can post anything on there. Matter of fact, what I would like is if when you do see something, like say somebody posts a series of, uh, like I did recently, of uh, drum flicks, uh, cungero, uh, Latino stuff. Hey, join in. Find one yourself. Join in the, the, the group and say, hey, look, at this is what I found. I have that interaction with another uh, person on the council. It's a woman, and, I feel, and her name's Natalie. I'll just say it right out. And I enjoy that. I don't have any fear of it. I think it's fun, okay? If, uh, if other women want to join in, hey, <laughs> come on down, you know? Uh... If other men want to uh, join in with Natalie, because Natalie's a beautiful person, okay? From what I can tell and feel. Uh, just my personal opinion. And so, uh, she's a spark. She's, uh, she's a Shakti energy in there, and I like it. And I like Kay, and I like any kind of Shakti energy that's in there. So I like to see an interplay between the male and female, the yin and yang. The, uh, and if I have to initiate that, and if I have to carry it on, <laughs> I will. Um, sometimes I might not feel like doing that. Sometimes I might feel like, yeah, let's just let a bunch of other stuff flow in here. Let's create a vacuum. 
and inevitably stuff comes flowing in. I'm talking pictures of uh, I. First of all, I don't want people to get the wrong impression here. It's not like Thunder just posts erotic pictures. I, although I think everything's erotic. Hell, I post pictures of landscape, uh, Native American, especially Apaches, uh, motorcycles because I ride a Harley. Uh, just a bunch of things, uh, poems, uh, I do videos. I can honestly say that people have said I'm a Renaissance man. I do a lot of different things. Hell, I'm into the martial arts. I'm into energy. I'm into meditation. I'm a pilot. I fly. I'm not beating my own drum here. But to me, all of that stuff is erotic. If it wasn't, it's all titillating. It's all uh, passionate. You've heard the saying, when you do something, you do it with passion. Well, that's the way thunder is. And so, barring any kind of... Uh, I think something was mentioned about drugs, uh, too. The only drugs that have been on uh, the Campfire Council is marijuana. Pictures of marijuana and uh, buds and stuff like that. Uh, let me just say this right now. That's God's greatest gift to the planet, one of them, herbally. Okay, it's definitely a medicine and should not be put into the same class as any other kind of drug because it's not really a drug. It's a healing herb. And I'm going to do a video about that too. But I'm not going to go there right now. I'm concentrating on one subject right now, which is eroticism in life eroticism in the and the passion of life that's what it's all about it's a primal instinct it's a primal drive the the man woman thing the uh, the erotic thing it runs everything in the universe and if you don't think it is well then you're really barking up the wrong tree because it is the universe it is yin and yang it is male female i cannot emphasize this enough Life is uh, the energy's fucking. So, uh, if it manifests in a, uh, a form of uh, enjoyment on whatever level, uh, whether it's uh, eating uh, brie cheese or drinking wine or going to Paris, France, or uh, riding your horse or riding your Harley or... Uh, taking a trip to Yosemite or uh, going to the beach or uh, going to one of your favorite places that you love. It's all fucking erotic. And if it isn't that much fun to you, then you're living life in a set of, or a series of filters, just like these shades I got on. This is something you need to think about. And I'm talking everybody. When, any, when anybody makes a comment and I started to do a video on it, or for that matter, when anybody says anything to me personally and I make a video, it's not only for them, it's for everybody that could get into this mindset of like uh, thinking certain things got to be a certain way. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. They don't have to be a certain way. They have to be any way, way that goes with that chaotic, that energy, that that uh, kundalini, that primal source, urge, flow. That's how you should be living life. And if you're not, well, I really, really feel fucking sorry for you. Because you're not living it from a sense of uh, orgasmic delight in everything. So I guess I'll leave it there. I think I've said enough. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to name this video. Probably the eroticism and passion of life. Something like that. But it is for the Campfire Council and it is for people in general. But I look at the council, uh, this group of mine, I look at it as a microcosm of the macrocosm. And anything goes, uh, videos, uh, comments, anything goes, except if they're crude, okay? And so you might ask what Thunder thinks is crude. Well, I'll be the judge of that. How's that? <laughs>
I'll be the judge of that. I think I know crude when I see it. I think I know harmful words. Okay, that's another thing. You can harm people with words. You can cause hurt feelings. Um, you can cause all kinds of havoc if you don't uh, try to form... If the words that come out of your mouth are not uh, like words that might come from Rumi's mouth or some other uh, beautiful poet. But then again, um, sometimes harder words with a feeling of love always are uh, beneficial. Okay, I'll leave it there. This is Thunder. I think I said enough on that subject. Adios.